Okay, so finally we come to the more tougher questions, okay? And this time we have uh, point T3 semicolon negative 5, which is rotated around the origin O through an acute angle of Q in a clockwise direction. The image point is given by, and then they give us the image, however, the Y coordinate of the image is not given, that's S. Okay, but S is given as smaller than zero. And then the first question is to calculate S. Now, as you can see, S is an unknown value. The only way we can solve an unknown value, well, maybe not the only way, but the only way I can think of firsthand is through an equation. So what I need is an equation where S appears in. And these various equations you can use, the one that I'm going to use comes from the fact that if I rotate something around the origin, okay, equation, an equation just means I need to find something equal to something else, okay, but if I rotate something around the origin, the point 3 comma negative 5 is about here, and if I rotate it uh, clockwise, is in that direction around the origin I don't know what the angle of rotation is but the way I rotate is I connect my original point to the center okay let's call that x1 and y1 and then I rotate it with q degrees around the center um, at an acute angle so I suppose that's too big but anyways it's just to illustrate and then the point I get x2 comma y2 that I get is there and uh, the point I'm trying to make is it's almost like taking a piece of string connecting it to the point and then uh, taking that string and circling it until I get to the angle I wanted to make now why am I saying that well point I'm trying to make is the distance from of the point to the origin must be equal for both of those in other words if I take the distance formula which is the square root of x1 minus 0 squared plus y1 minus 0 squared then I must get the same answer because that's the distance from the origin to that point um, if I do this with the image okay in other words x2 minus sorry minus 0 squared plus y2 minus 0 squared Okay, now since there's a square root on both sides, I don't need a square root anymore. The square root of this side uh, is equal to the square root of that side, which means surely the insides must be the same. Okay, what's the insides now? Well, we get x1, uh, which is given. Remember, x1 is now this, this point here. That's x1, y1. That's x2, y2. So I get 3 minus 0, so I get 3 squared which is 9 okay plus y1 is negative 5 negative 5 minus 0 is 0 negative 5 squared is 25 okay is equal to and then on this side I get x2 which is that 3 minus 5 square root 3 over 2 minus 0 which I can uh, ignore squared plus and y2 is just s minus 0 is 0 uh, is just s squared okay so that's the equation I need to solve okay on this side all I'm going to do is just write that out 3 minus 5 square root 3 squared means I multiply it by itself okay this is that uh, first in is out is last whatever you do I like doing this one with both and that one with both so I get 9 okay plus 3 uh, 3 times negative that gives me negative 15 and then this one same thing I get uh, sorry negative 15 square root 3 negative 15 square root 3 and then the last give me positive 25 times square root 3 gives me 75 okay so when I simplify that I get 84 minus 30 square root 3 that's what I would get as a numerator here I'm taking everything to the other side okay well I'm subtracting it on the other side is what I'm actually saying 9 plus 25 gives me 34 okay 34 minus this 84 minus 30 square root 3 over 4 is equal to s squared now I want to add up these two terms so I have to multiply that 
with 4, so it's over 4. 34 times 4 is 136. 136 minus 84 is 52. That's negative, negative, so that becomes positive. 30 square root 3 over 4 is equal to s squared. Perfect. Okay, now I take the square root on both sides because of the square here. So I get that s is equal to the square root of 52 plus 30 square root 3 over 2. I took the square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator, and you will recall that that's a plus minus, but initially they told me that s must be smaller than 0. So this must be a negative. Now that in general is a very, very ugly number, and some of you might be lucky you have those cool calculators. You just punch this in, and it gives you a, a nice simplified cert form. What I'm going to do next is just show you how can I write this out as two brackets like this. In other words, a bracket squared so that I can take the square root of it. As you can see, this is can actually be written as 3 minus 5 square root 3 squared. Okay, Can we do something like this with this one as well? Well, let's see. Um, if I try and square a bracket like this, ax squared ax plus b squared, then the result is ax squared plus bx, uh, sorry, bx, 2bx, 2abx, I mean, plus b squared. So what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to let x equal the square root of 3. That means x squared is equal to, mm, no, 3, 9, 3. Okay, so I my x is now my square root okay so I want 2ab to equal 30 in other words the coefficient of the x or the coefficient of the square root 3 I want to be 30 so 2ab equals 30 that means a times b is equal to 15 okay now you can try various uh, um, combinations like 1 times 15 or 3 times 5 or 5 times 3, or 15 times 1. That's now A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, and how will you know which one will work? Well, you must notice that this plus that, those are the terms that do not have a square root 3. So these two terms must add up to give me 52, the constant without the square root 3. Okay, so let's say, so these are my a's and those are my b's. Okay, um, I, I'm going to try those two. I'm not even going to try these. Okay, why am I sticking to those two? Well, let me show you. Because 3 and 5 were given initially. Okay, so it's, it's probably one of those two. So let's Let's try 3. So in other words, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 5. So 3 times x squared is equal to 3. Okay. 3 times 3 plus b squared is now 5 squared is 25 is equal to Okay, equal to 25, oh, but I see I made a mistake here. Let me just show you my mistake. I apologize. This term should be a squared x squared. Okay, I hope you saw that. Okay, so that what I'm actually trying to solve is ax squared, a squared x squared plus b squared. Okay, so this must have a square there. Okay, which means that this is equal to 27 plus 25 is equal to... 52 and we have a winner okay we need we need to get 52 so this one will work a must equal 3 b must equal 5 let's just try the other one what if it was uh, 5 squared times 3 plus 3 squared in other words a is equal to 5 b is equal to 3 then we would have gotten 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75 plus 3 squared is 84 that would have been the case for this one. You see, that one gives me 84. Okay, so this one can now be simplified into two brackets. You can see my two brackets okay, is going to be, I said, a 
is 3 and b is 5 and I'm using this expression okay so a is 3 square root 3 b is 5 3 square root 3 b is 5 the only question is now what should the sign be in here well we can see that um, a times b uh, a times b must be 30 so either both signs either this should be negative and that one should be negative so that negative 3 in other words negative uh, a is negative and b is negative therefore we get a positive okay either both of them must be negative or both of them must be positive okay so we're not sure which one we should use yet either both negative or both positive so uh, we're unsure both of them actually will not equal this okay so we can't have both negative can we let's see negative and negative, that were positive yes so both can be negative or both can be positive okay so I'm, I'm, I'm still right so we're taking the square root of that with a negative in front over 2 okay so once we've done our square root okay of that remember if we do take the square root of this we end up getting plus minus okay because it can be a plus minus so let's just take that plus minus out and then make it equal to 3 square root 3 plus 5 okay I don't think this is technically written correct but that's fine okay divided by 2 now remember what we said our s must be negative okay so it doesn't matter which one we choose here with a plus minus as long as in the end this is our answer negative they must this whole term must end up being negative so we can even leave it out there and just say this is negative 3 square root 3 plus negative 5 over 2 that is my s my value for s how about the second part of this question calculate the angle of rotation okay now to calculate the angle of rotation again we're trying to calculate theta it's an unknown value to calculate an unknown I need an equation the equation that we are going to use is the simple equation well I suppose it's not really simple but the equation that we use to do rotations okay and that is that the image is equal to x times cos of theta but now it's important to know that we are doing a clockwise rotation when we're doing clockwise we're actually going to use negative theta think of negative theta as an angle in the fourth quadrant in the fourth quadrant cos will remain positive all the others will change signs so in other words cos will keep its sign all the others will change their sign so this will just be cos of theta and then the original formula was y sine of theta but because theta is negative it's in the fourth quadrant fourth quadrant angles gets subtracted uh, so uh, makes sorry it makes sine negative so uh, that sign must change comma and then same goes here this is now x sine of theta but again sine of theta's sign must change so that gets a negative and it used to be y cos theta and since cos of theta keeps its sign because of negative angles that would remain a positive so this is the equation that we're going to use for a clockwise rotation and now we simply substitute we know the image for x was equal to what's the image the image is 3 minus 5 3 minus 5 square root 3 over 2 now that's the x coordinate if I replace everything in here in other words if I replace x with 3 and y with negative 5 so when, when I replace x with 3 and I use cos of my angle that I'm trying to calculate plus y which is now negative actually negative 5 sine of that angle I'm trying to calculate and if I solve this if I knew what theta was I would get that answer okay um, and the same for the second part is it used to be s but we calculated s now and this is the value for s negative 3 square root 3 negative 5 negative 3 square root 3 negative 5 over 2 okay and that would be the result if we take negative uh, x which is 3 times sine of theta plus 
y, which used to be negative 5, so just keep it negative 5, cos of theta. Okay, so actually what we have is we have two equations, which is brilliant. Okay, we need two equations for these. And we can see that's our first equation. In other words, that 3 cos theta, if we knew what theta was, we would substitute in, and this is what our answer would be like if we didn't use a calculator. Okay, if we just did it nicely. Okay, that's what my answer would have been. And that's the first the first one okay so this is equation one okay my second equation I get is for the y coordinate or three sine theta minus five cos theta maybe let me just actually rewrite this so that the signs and the causes are underneath each other so let's say negative five cos theta plus uh, minus three sine theta is equal to and then we get this answer negative 3 square root 3 minus 5 over 2 okay so this uh, or yeah, this is the two um, points I get or sorry equations I get this is equation number two and now it's simply a matter of solving two simultaneous equations either try and get cos on its own or try and get sine on its own the method I'm going to use is called elimination okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this negative 3 into a positive 5 why am I going to do that? Well, if I can make this into a positive 5, I can add these two together. And if I add them together, then minus 5 sine plus 5 sine would just cancel out. Okay, so how am I going to do it? Well, first I need to divide everything with a negative 3 so that I don't have the negative 3. And then I'm going to multiply everything with a 5. Okay. And that's going to give me the positive 5. So let me multiply in the 5 and divide with a 3. So if I multiply negative 5 with 5, I get negative 25. Divided by 3 gives me positive 25. So I get uh, positive 25 over 3, actually, cos of theta. And this one, if I multiply with a 5, I get negative 15. Divided by 3 gives negative 3 gives me positive 5. That's what I wanted positive 5 sine theta on this side I multiply uh, well I yes I multiply with a 5 and I divide with a 3 so if I multiply everything with a 5 in there I get negative 15 square root 3 5 times negative 5 is negative 25 over and now the 2 now I'm not just dividing with 2 I'm also dividing with negative 3 so I'm dividing with negative 6 Okay, now I want to add these two together, and you can see, so let's call this equation 3. Now I can say take equation 1 plus equation 3. And the reason why I do it, that is because now this and that term would cancel out. So I get 3 plus 25 over 3. So I want to make this over 3, so I must multiply 3 on the numerator and denominator so I can add fractions. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 25 gives me 30. 4 over 3 cos theta okay is equal to what am I getting on the other side remember the negative 5 sign and the plus 5 sign 5 sign cancels on the other side I want to add these two fractions together but I need a common denominator okay so let's make our common denominator negative 6 so okay it seems a little bit weird that we have a negative 6 can't we just multiply that in front well yes it, uh, whatever you want to do I'm going to make it a negative 6 so I must multiply numerator everything in the numerator with a negative 3 and everything in the denominator with a negative 3 that will give me negative 6 then I can add it together can't I okay so the numerator now becomes negative 9 minus it becomes a plus 15 square root 3 over negative 6 okay, and what do I get okay I'm adding these two things together so I get negative 9 negative 25 gives me negative 34 okay that's a good sign okay negative 34 because these are 34 that sign as well okay then I get positive 15 minus 15 
uh, square root 3. So in other words, I, they, they, those two cancel out. So I get negative 34 over negative 6. Okay, so this means I get that cos of theta. Okay, I can divide both sides, or I multiply actually both sides with a 3 over 34. Multiply by a 3 over 34. Uh, that negatives cancel, the 34 and 34 cancels. 3 goes into itself once and into 6 two times, so I get 1 over 2. Okay, you can see why I say this is such a long question. And now we get our reference angle. Cos of theta is equal to a half, so what is my reference angle? Well, hopefully you know by now through special angles that cos of theta is a half if my reference angle is 60 degrees. Now, my, therefore, I get that theta is either 60 degrees plus 360 times k, where k is an element of integers, or theta is equal to negative 60 degrees plus 360 degrees times k, where k is an element of integers. Okay, but now remember, we are doing a clockwise act. Uh, clockwise rotation okay now we've already considered theta to be negative we've already made theta negative in our in our question okay so or in in our formula so we are not considering this one we are only considering that one so we are saying 60 degrees clockwise clockwise or we add 360 the reason why we don't have to do that is because they tell us we have an acute angle okay so theta is equal to 60 degrees and that is that